addresses uh, so we are very thankful to his grace on Kulkeshav Prabhu he is the main inspiration behind the program he has been practicing Krishna consciousness for 30 years now so even before COVID happened Prabhu used to tell us to do online programs but by his blessings we are able to do a few online programs Prabhu would you like to address the congregation for some time <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you, Shri Hare Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So, this is the th Gita Gyan second level, third level. Level two, Prabhu. Level two. Okay. Yes. And how, how many are in this who has done level one? Or if you are directly in level two also? Uh, nobody is directly in level two, Prabhu. All of them have come through level one and then they have done level two. Okay. Thank you very much, all of you, taking this uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita course done by Skon Shashadi Puram. Uh, that uh, conducted by our Sakar Nagar branch. We, as everybody has discussed Bhagavad Gita, that uh, you know, when Bhagavad Gita was spoken, Arjuna he was in so much distress. And in battlefield, where so much noise, uh, 14 or 18 action, action, 18 actually, then I was there to fight from both sides. Nearly, roughly, you can say 40 lakh uh, soldiers were there. There was so much noise, drum, sh conch, that uh, elephants, uh, uh, horses, so much noise, still Arjuna asked Krishna, okay, which question is in everybody's our mind, same question he asked, okay, I don't want to fight. And you, it's a very strange thing, okay, after everything set right, war was set right, and uh, ready to fight that uh, only just a matter of time war will start and Arjuna bow to Krishna and says I surrender and he says I don't want to fight first he doesn't want to surrender actually but he go on arguing actually but Krishna just because he was very near, dear to Krishna Arjuna so he go on explaining him. And when Krishna and Arjuna understand, then he surrenders to Krishna. So that shows that hearing is the most important point, which we were you are we all are doing actually. Hearing Bhagavad Gita second level, then third level or fourth level. Whatever you can go hearing Bhagavad Gita, there is no end of hearing actually. Because it is as Krishna himself says, it's a givetam, means very secretive knowledge. You go on listening, you go on, I, big, big teacher also go on explaining, but still they, I think there will be, there will be no end of uh, secret which can be revealed by Bhagavad Gita at every new, every stage and every time whenever new, new is here. You, Actually, Prabhupada also, if you start 
he can people started this movement of Iskon by hearing when he was sitting in a park and just thinking nobody was following him. He just took to Kartal and chanting Hare Krishna Mant- Mahamantra. And the early days disciples, you call or well wisher, who was who started following Prabhupada, they hear his kirtan. First point was the hearing. When they hear is the most important actually. So we should hear and that is also important a right source. Who has who has learned who has learned from uh, his guru or his uh, can teachers a uh, proper source. He can only teach us proper source only can teach us this Guhitam. You can see that uh, right source means Prahlad Maharaj, right source was Narad Muni. When Narad Muni told him, he followed blindly Narad Muni about Bhakti. His father had uh, so much opulence. Still he didn't bother. Okay, my father will don't give me property or this, but still he followed Bhakti. Another, in a bhakti that Krishna doesn't see okay, whether we have opulence, we have kind of, uh, beauty or anything he doesn't require. He requires only complete surrender or our love for him to just reveal himself to us. So, I'll request you to take seriously because this uh, life is very rare. We have seen in the last two years of uh, pandemic, life is very rare. And we don't know that. I am not scaring or, or telling you okay, life, life is scary. But you see, this, we cannot say okay, who Life is short, actually. We can say life is short. So, whatever our... that Krishna knows our duty is there. In Bhagavad Gita also says, okay, Krishna says, your duty is to just follow me. And rest I will take care. When Krishna himself says that... Uh, no, and uh, I can assure you, okay, there is no better friend or no, there is no other friend then Krishna, which he has no motive to tell us to follow him. Because he loves us, he, he likes us, he loves us. For that purpose, he wants us to follow him and go, go back to God. I'll, requ- I'll request you, all of you, please take seriously chanting and reading of Bhagavad Gita and third level also after completing, just go on learning. There is no end of learning of Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hi Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you very much. Uh, now, may I request uh, His Grace Anadi Jagannath Prabhu to kindly introduce uh, His Holiness Bhakti Vidya Vanasha Narasimha Maharaj. Kindly give an address. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Babu. Sure. It's to have Maharaj with us today. And Maharaj is currently Maharaj is my Bhakti web teacher. So, but uh, we are very, very fortunate to have Maharaj in our home. Uh, Maharaj is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada and uh, we have seen that Maharaj preaches in India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, of course, Malaysia and Thailand. So, so we welcome Maharaj for uh, this uh, ceremony and we request Maharaj to kindly bless all the 
devotees so that they can become serious and practice um, their Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. If you can please. Um, Om Magyana Timaran. Om Magyana Timaran Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tadine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Recording in progress. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadara Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this Gita Gyan program originated with you there in Bangalore and later on it was taken up over in Malaysia and I heard about it from the Malaysia devotees, how it was very successful in Malaysia, very big numbers of people. And so I took it up myself and we had also very successful programs in some of the countries where I also travel and teach, like Thailand and uh, Taiwan also. And now devotees in Russia are also taking up, just about to begin the program there in Russia. So it's an ongoing program. It's, it's not something which is very limited. It's and really an unlimited field to teach the message of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is universal knowledge and it is perennial knowledge. I mean, it's timeless. We are so fortunate to have that opportunity to take part in teaching and in studying the Bhagavad Gita. My first contact with the Bhagavad Gita came when I was a, a teen, I was a student at, at, at college in, in the UK. I was studying in the university. I was an engineering student, but we had to take a humanities course. And one of the subjects was the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> that was where I first met the Bhagavad Gita. Of course, it wasn't Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita was a very different edition of Bhagavad Gita. There's so many editions. And Prabhupada saw that, that there were so many different editions of Bhagavad Gita, but none of them touched on the real spirit of the Bhagavad Gita. And it was Srila Prabhupada who gave us the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And the more we read it, and the more we study it, the more we appreciate how deep and how rich the knowledge is. Not only is it deep and rich, but it is very practical and valuable in our life. It helps us to understand more about the nature of the world and about how we can improve our life. It answers all of our questions. Just the other day, one of the devotees in Taiwan told me how she'd given a book to one of her doctors. And, and the doctor immediately looked at the book and said, does this book answer questions? <laughs> well, she's very lucky she came to the right book, right? Bhagavad Gita answers all the questions. I know before I became a devotee, I had a lot of questions about life. 
I was really inquiring and nobody gave me answers. Nobody gave me satisfactory answers. And it wasn't until I met devotees and how I, I would sit in their Bhagavad Gita classes and hear from them and I would be so pleased and so thrilled to learn what I've been looking for for many years. So I hope all of you have the same feeling about the Bhagavad Gita, that it's really something very, very special which we treasure. And of course the nature of the Bhagavad Gita, as the nature of all uh, spiritual knowledge, Shastra, is that it, it's dynamic, that we can never know everything from the Bhagavad Gita. There's so much more. Just like Prabhu was just saying, we're studying Srimad Bhagavatam, we're doing courses called Bhakti Vaibhav and Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Sarvabhoma, other courses are there going further on into other Shastras. But you could also study the Bhagavad Gita at a higher level. You could study the Bhagavad Gita at the level of Bhakti Vaibhav and Bhakti Vedanta and Bhakti Sarvabhoma. Because the Bhagavad Gita is so deep, it's so rich, we can never know the limit. We give the example just like the ocean. When you go in the shore of the ocean, you don't know everything about the whole ocean. There's so much in the ocean, you can never know everything. We know a little bit about the shore. So Bhagavad Gita is like that. We are having our Gita Gyan courses. They're very valuable and it's very good for us. I know I benefited by teaching them and I hope all the devotees who heard them and took part in them also benefited. But there's so much more. We shouldn't think that, oh, now I've done it, I've studied the Bhagavad Gita, I know it all. No, there's so much more. You have, we have to go on and read it again and again. And Prabhupada himself, he told devotees, he wanted to write another edition of the Bhagavad Gita. He was thinking, he said, I think I should write another Bhagavad And they said, but Prabhupada, you already wrote the Bhagavad Gita. But Prabhupada said, well, there's so much more we can always say. So we shouldn't think that just because we've studied Bhagavad Gita a couple of times that we know everything, we, we understand everything. There's so much more to go on, to study, and to realize. And it's not just studying, but what we encourage devotees to do and what is really important for us is teaching also. And our movement, we need more and more teachers that because there's so many people who need to be educated in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the foundation of our Krishna consciousness. And if we get a good strong foundation, then certainly studying Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita are not so much trouble. If you've got a good grasp of the Bhagavad Gita, then you, your life is really successful. Shankaracharya himself said, a little knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita and a few drops of Ganges water and you're qualified for liberation. That was Shankaracharya's statement. Srila Prabhupada, he encouraged all of us as devotees. He wanted us every day we should read one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Reading one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita seems like a challenge, but if you think about it, it's not really so bad. There are many devotees make a vow, a chapter a day. And you read a chapter a day, less than three weeks, you can finish the whole Bhagavad Gita. And then you read it again, and we read it again. Just like I've been studying the Bhagavad Gita now 
more than 50 years. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> but still, I, it's ever fresh. I mean, I, I can't go without a Bhagavad Gita. I always have to refer to the Bhagavad Gita. Where, what is that verse in the Bhagavad Gita? My, you know, my memory is not as good as it should be. I should know everything. But it's very helpful to have a Bhagavad Gita with me and to show people the text. Look, this is what it says in Bhagavad Gita. I remember Srila Prabhupada instructed us one time. He said, wherever you go, he said, you should take a Bhagavad Gita with you. He said, when you go out, like we were going out for book distribution, I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement in London, and we used to go out in the streets of London every day and distribute books. So Srila Prabhupada told us, we should take a Bhagavad Gita with us. And he said, when you stop and talk to people about Krishna, you show them the Bhagavad Gita and let them read it. Show them the text. So Srila Prabhupada wanted us to use the Bhagavad Gita to teach people, to awaken them to spiritual knowledge. We can see the condition of the world today. It's not a very pleasant place. We may say, well, it's been like that. For, that's the nature of the material world. It's not meant to be a very beautiful place. It's a material world. It's a Bhagavad Gita says, Dukalayam Ashasvatam, a, te a temporary place of misery. But we can make this world into the spiritual world. It can become Vaikuntha, by Krishna consciousness. The more we distribute Krishna consciousness, the more the face of the world can be changed. And Prabhupada explained to us, he said, we don't need a lot of people, even a small percentage of the world. If a small percentage of the world become Krishna conscious, the whole face of the world can be changed. So we're seeing how by distributing the Bhagavad Gita, we have the Bhagavad Gita now translated into so many languages, I think maybe 80 or more languages. We've seen not only, of course, you, I was impressed to hear all your Gita Gyan courses going on in so many languages, Kannada and Tamil and Hindi as well as English. But we also have these Gita Gyan courses going on in Thai and we have it going on in Chinese. We have it going on in uh, Nepali also and now it's going to start in Russian also. So, this is Bhagavad Gita. It's knowledge for everyone. And certainly the people of India, remember Lord Chaitanya taught Bharata Bhumiti Haila Manushya Janmajar, that those people who have the good fortune to be born in Bharatvarsh, that they have to make their life sex, make their life Krishna conscious first. First they should become perfect and they should teach others. Bharata Bhumite Haila Manushya Janmaja Janma Sartaka Karikara Para Upakar. Right? Para Upakar. For the benefit of others. We want to teach this message to everyone. We don't want to be miserly about it. Alright? We have this knowledge. Srila Prabhupada gives a very nice example about the importance of sharing and distributing this knowledge. He said, when we keep water in a clay pot, when I first went to India, that was like 1970s, I remember seeing how we would keep water in clay pots. Not so many people kept refrigerators, we would just have these clay pots to store water. But when you keep the water in the clay pot, because the clay pot is porous, so the water gradually evaporates and dries up. So Srila Prabhupada gave that example about knowledge, that when we study the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita 
and we get that knowledge that if we don't use it regularly, then gradually that knowledge will evaporate, it dries up. And we have the experience, uh, maybe you remember a sloka, just like if, we, if you take a course which we teach here in Mayapur Institute, we teach Bhakti Shastri, and the students have to revise some different slokas from the Bhagavad Gita. And so we may memorize them for some time, but if we don't use them regularly, then we forget them. So it's important for us that when we study this Bhagavad Gita and we learn this nice, wonderful knowledge, that we also use it. Prabhupada said that it's very good to hear. It's good to hear, it's good to read. But he said, more important than that is discussing and explaining what you've heard and what you've read. That is even more important because that's where you'll get enriched with realization and you'll get more and more deeper understandings by discussing with others and explaining. And this is what our Krishna consciousness movement is actually for. It's for discussing and explaining and in this way we become enriched in realizations about the it, It's such a wonderful opportunity for all of us to become Krishna conscious. So, I want to thank all of you very much for giving me the opportunity to address all of you. Uh, Krishna consciousness, as we heard, it, it's for the human being. Just like in Vedanta Sutra, it begins with Atato Brahma Jignasa. The Vedanta Sutra begins with Atato. Now, now you're in the human form of life. So now we have this opportunity to understand what is matter and what is spirit. This is what we learn from Bhagavad Gita. We get the answers to these kind of questions. What is matter and what is spirit? People don't know these things. They don't have any real knowledge about the purpose of life or the higher, the higher goal of life. They don't know anything from the scriptures. People, education, modern education, just conditions people into sense gratification. We become more attached to the body and we think more in terms of our own material position. We, we identify more with the body because of education. That kind of education, that is the miseducation. It is not the real education. Real education begins when we start to understand, I'm not the body. Therefore, we see in the Bhagavad Gita how Lord Krishna explains items of knowledge and they begin with amanitvam, adamvitvam, being humble and giving up pride. This is very difficult for people to do in this Kali Yuga. Everyone is so proud and we're so attached to our position and our material situation. But the Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to get free from these things. The Bhagavad Gita is showing us how to come to the light. Right? The Vedas say, Tamasima Jyotirgama. Don't stay in the dark. Come to the light. Where is the light? This is the real light in Krishna consciousness. So thank you all very much. On behalf of my spiritual master, who is also your spiritual master, who is also your uh, Shiksha Guru, the founder Acharya of our ISKCON Society, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivinanta Swami Prabhupada, I thank you very much, all the devotees there, you're like a beacon light for the whole world and taking up this mission of propagating the Bhagavad Gita. You've done a wonderful job 
and I am very much indebted to all of you. So thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Mara. Do we have some time for a few questions, Mara? All right, yeah, sure. Anyone has any questions, movies? We don't get such a time we have. Do you have a Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, I've got a question like, so uh, how many readings does it take uh, to get a good understanding of Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> how many readings does it take? <laughs> well, you know, you may read the book eternally, you may never understand it. But you may read it one time, you may understand it. So it's not, we can't make it hard and fast and say that, oh, you have to read it six times, then you'll understand. It's not like that. You know, it depends a lot on who you're hearing from. And you, are you, as, as I said, just reading the Bhagavad Gita is not as good as discussing it and explaining it with others. Right? You may sit in here and we say it goes in the one ear, it goes out the other. This is a problem. So we, we want to hear really carefully and how to know how, how well we're hearing when we start discussing it and explaining it. And so we, we try to emphasize that in our study programs with our different classes, you know, we try to, rather than just lecturing, which is more didactic education, you know, you just give people a lot of knowledge and they have to remember it, and you don't know if they understand it or not. But we, we try to encourage the students more in their own uh, practical application of this knowledge. This is a modern, more modern approach to education, to in, involve the students themselves in thinking more about the situation and how to apply this knowledge. And so Bhagavad Gita is really like that. It's really for thoughtful people. It's not just simply read it and understand it. We want to think about how to use it. You know, people have things, some, there are some people, they, they have, uh, they're called Vedantists. They're more armchair philosophers. You go to the University of California in Berkeley and there's a Vedanta society and they sit in armchairs and smoke cigars and drink cocktails and discuss Vedanta. <laughs> So, Krishna Consciousness is something very different, very special, that we don't just only uh, give education to people, but we want people to actually apply what they're learning and to learn how to apply it in their own life for, for their benefit, to improve our life, to have a better life. As Srila Prabhupada said just before he left the world, he said, if I have done anything for the world, he said, I've given people a better life. So I, I really feel that is so true. The more I'm a member, the longer I stay in our Krishna consciousness movement, the more I realize how much better my life is in Krishna consciousness by the grace of Srila Prabhupada. Through him giving us these books, introducing these books to us. You know, I'd read Bhagavad Gita before, but I really didn't understand at all what was going on. It wasn't until Prabhupada's books came out that I thought, this is something I can really understand. This really has meaning to me. And that brought me to go to the temple and get involved in Krishna consciousness. Previously, I was like eclectic. I was reading so many other different books, different gurus and things. I never understood what they were going on about. They didn't have any, anything really which touched me or which really awoke in, anything in me. But as soon as I read a little book by Prabhupada, I read one of his small books, I think it was the Tomosh Yoga System, 
And I thought, this is amazing. It just, everything just made so much sense. The, his, word, his, his, sent, his writing was just so clear, it was so meaningful. And I thought, this is just something special and I have to go and, I have to go and investigate it. And so that's why we give so much importance to book distribution also in Krishna consciousness. That's why we do try to you know, print so many books and distribute them everywhere. People sometimes misunderstand us, they think we are just businessmen, we're just trying to make money. You know, they, it means they really don't know anything about Krishna consciousness. Often we give out the books for much less than what we pay. We spend so much money on printing the books and we will give them out for much less. Often, sometimes even we give them away free also, you know. Because we're not thinking about making money. That's not, we're not in business. We're looking to save souls. We're real welfare workers, social workers. And we're not just trying to save the body. We're, we want to save the soul from going into the darkest regions of ignorance. And the best way to do it is by giving people Krishna consciousness. I wanted to do something with my life. When I was studying at college, you know, I was thinking, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I was thinking, I was thinking about doing voluntary work overseas. I thought maybe I could do some kind of missionary work in third world countries or something like that. But then later on I met the devotees and somehow Krishna fulfilled my my desire. I went to third world countries, I was in places like the Philippines and so on, and we were distributing Krishna consciousness. We were giving people real mercy, the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. We were teaching them the goal of life, we were teaching them the real spiritual identity. And the more we distribute this knowledge, the more we see how much it is appreciated and it's so essential for people in the world today. One time uh, we were distributing the book Coming Back and one man got the book Coming Back and it happened we went to the man's home and he'd written He'd, he'd written big sections from the book and he'd written it on big pieces of paper and stuck it on his wall in his house. <laughs> it, it was really, really amazing, really wonderful. He was so impressed, so inspired, just reading the basic knowledge about transmigration in the book coming back that he thought, oh, this, and, and he wrote it all up on a big piece of paper and stuck it on his wall in his living room. <laughs> this is how powerful Prabhupada's books are, that they really change people's lives. So, you know, we, we do try to give people a better life. That is the fact. And actually, it, it is true that if we are faithful and we follow the process, then certainly we have a better life by the grace of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna came to speak the Bhagavad Gita for the benefit of the world. Now it's up to us to take advantage. Hare Krishna. So many hands are up, I see. <laughs> I think our time is up though, yeah? Maharaj, if, if you have time, we can take the questions. I think that makes... Uh... Really? If you have time. Yeah, I have time. We have three questions, Marat. Okay. Okay, so we first give to the base. The base raised hand first. So, who would like to go? You can unmute and ask you. Yes, Thank you go ahead. So, from our base, uh, Shikram who had a question. So, which is common from all of us that how to develop that interest uh, in reading about Gita Devi. How to develop the interest to read the Bhagavad Gita daily. Yes, you have to have that desire. You have to really want 
to understand the Bhagavad Gita. You have to really want to improve your life. You have to want to change. You have to feel, you should feel dissatisfied with your present situation and you should feel a need to improve yourself. So if you feel that inadequacy and that there's a need to improve yourself, then you will want to read the Bhagavad Gita more. You'll want to take more shelter of the scriptures. We have to be convinced that this, is, this book can really help me. And Maharaj, uh, you said uh, even after 50 years you still feel the freshness. Uh, it's a fresh new book when you read again. So how to keep that interest? After reading sometimes it will be, okay I have read two times, I have read three times, I have read four times. And I have heard Arsula Prabhupada used to read uh, himself, he used to read the book again and again. Yes, how to do that? Well, that I said, you, it's, it's good if, if you can explain it and discuss it with others. Okay. That's, what, that's where you get more realization when you start discussing and explaining it. And Prabhupada would, would have it read to him and then so often he would comment. He would, exp he would explain something. So it's not just reading. Yeah, reading is good, but then you also want to explain it and discuss it. You should be thinking, what did I read? After you read it, you think about what did I read? And then you close the book and then you explain what you read. Not that we just read. It's not a reading exercise. Krishna Prabhu, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, Prabhu, my question is, as we already know that chanting plays a very significant role, right, to attain Krishna. So, my question here is how to uh, chant consciously, Prabhu, because sometimes our mind goes here and there. So, how to chant Prabhu consciously? That is my question. Yes, well, if you have a good knowledge of the Sambandha, the Sambandha Gyan, the knowledge of the, our relationship with Krishna, then that will help to, for you to chant better. Also, I find that louder chanting helps me to concentrate better. You want to hear. When we chant, we have to use the tongue. Prabhupada said it's not a question of the mind. It's, you use the tongue to chant and the ears to hear. So. Are you chanting loudly or are you just sitting chanting si very silently? You do want to chant enough so that you can hear the, the sound of the mantra. We have to hear the vibration of the holy name. That's important. And the sambandha, knowledge of Lord Krishna and knowledge of the holy name. Sometimes reading books like, you know, there's that book Harinam Chintamani, that's very good, that can help you also to improve the quality of your chanting. Now, just hearing more about Krishna, you read the Bhagavad Gita also, it will help you to concentrate more on the sound of the holy name. So it's practice, again practice, and it's, you also have to be in the right place. Where are you trying to chant? You know, if, if you sit in front of a television and try to chant, it will be very difficult. If you're, if you're moving around with a lot of other people who are not devotees and they're talking, you're trying to chant, it will be difficult. You've got to put yourself into the right mood. You want to chant properly, you want to go to the temple room, sit in front of the deities and chant. That's very good. That also helps sometimes to wake up earlier in the morning and chant. These are different things which you can do. The main thing, you have the desire, you really want to chant, you make that effort and the Krishna will give you the intelligence how to do it. Okay? Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Maharaj, can we have one more question, last question? Yes, one more last question. Yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. So we have a question. Apply Bhagavad Gita principles in our life. 
How can you apply Bhagavad Gita principles in our life? Well, there are so many principles to apply in Bhagavad Gita. All right, let's first of all, what does Krishna say? Surrender unto me. Right? So how do we apply the principle of surrender? Then we have to look. What, what does surrender involve? We learn for accept everything favorable for devotional service. All right? What is favorable for devotional service? Hearing, chanting, worshipping Krishna, reading the books about Krishna, associating with devotees. These things, you do these things. This is applying the principles of devotional service. And also, we have to give up the things which are not favourable for devotional service. Of course, there are things like no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no meat-eating, these things. They have to be given up, of course. We have to know what are the principles. And then when we think about how to apply them, not very difficult. Common sense will tell you how to apply these principles. What do we have to do? We have to engage our mind in thinking about Krishna, right? The most confidential knowledge. Engage your mind in thinking of me, Krishna says. So how will we think of Krishna? If we're going to think about Krishna, we have to hear about him. We have to hear regularly about Krishna. We have to hear about Krishna's qualities, about Krishna's pastimes. We have to hear about also Krishna's devotees, the, his, his, uh, the, the great acharyas who teach Krishna consciousness. All of these things will help us to think more about Lord Krishna. So engage your mind in thinking of me, become my devotee. How do you become a devotee? You have to associate with other devotees. Go and find the association of devotees and be with devotees. That's a principle. Uh, become my devotee. Worship me. Well, you go with the devotees, so the, you take, they'll take you to the temple. You can see how to worship Krishna. Learn. We just saw devotees worshipping Srimad Bhagavatam. Very nice offering incense and flowers like that. That, that is worshipping Krishna and offer obeisances unto me. That's also a very simple thing to do. Bow down before Krishna. Some people say they don't like to bow down. You don't like to bow down? Then you have to bow down to old age, disease and death. But if you bow down to Krishna, then you can be free from old age, disease and death. You won't have to come back again in this world. So the principles of Krishna consciousness, are, they're, they're not difficult. In fact, they're joyful. We find great pleasure, great happiness in practicing the principles of Krishna consciousness. We eat prasada, we eat food offered to Krishna. We, we all enjoy that. We enjoy kirtan. We, we enjoy Krishna consciousness in all of its different aspects. It's very satisfying to the soul. And so this is the principle. Be happy. Be a devotee. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna